Welcome to this podcast. I'm Bernard Ho, a final year medical student, here to talk to you about melanoma. We'll go through the definition of the disease, the epidemiology, the various risk factors, diagnosis of the different common types of melanoma, investigations, and briefly on the management and prognostic factors of melanoma. Melanomas, defined as malignant and controlled proliferation of melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells of the skin. Melanin, which appears as pigmentation on the skin, is a protein produced by the melanocytes in defense for the skin to the UV radiation. It is worthwhile to mention here that the number of melanocytes do not differ between different ethnic races, but it is the amount of melanin produced that differs. Therefore, dark skinned individual skin are much less likely to be damaged by UV radiation as compared to white or pale skinned individuals. Based on the statistics on Cancer Research UK, in 2010 solely, 12,818 people were diagnosed with malignant melanoma in the UK. Also in 2012, 2,746 deaths from skin cancer were recorded, of which melanoma took up 2,203 of those cases. In comparison of all the different types of cancers, melanoma takes up a significant 4%, and it's estimated that the incident rate will only be going up in the next 30 years for the UK. Multiple risk factors are associated with malignant melanomas. Therefore, a detailed history must be taken when a pigmented lesion is suspected on presentation. Everything from personal history of immunosuppression, such as HIV, previous skin cancers, type of skin that the patient has, whether it burns or tans easily, to their lifestyle. Where they have lived before, previous sunburns, use of sunbeds, and use of sunscreen. It is important to know that these risk factors are mainly for the most common subtype of melanoma, the superficial spreading melanoma subtype, and not the less common types. As per the rest of medicine, to diagnose something, we need to start off with history and examination. With the history, it is worthwhile if the patient has noted any changes in the lesion's size, shape, and color. Melanoma may have a variety of colors varying from tan, dark brown, black, blue, red, and occasionally light gray. Some lesions, a melanotic melanoma, will have a lack of pigmentation, making it hard to diagnose initially. Some melanomas will be itchy or tender, while some advanced lesions may bleed easily or crust over. On examination, there are two descriptive sets of criteria that can help a clinician to differentiate a normal mole or nevi from a melanoma. Using the picture from before, let's run through more commonly known A, B, C, D, E criteria for examining pigmented lesions. A is for asymmetry. If you look at the lesion, it's quite obvious there's no symmetry present in any aspect. B is for borders, and they are irregular in this pigmented lesion. There are also variation of pigmentation color within this lesion, which covers C. The two left that I cannot depict exactly through this image is D for diameter of more than 6 millimeters and E for elevation, which may be felt on palpation of the lesion. Note that this criteria, however simple it may be, is quite sensitive and highly specific to melanomas. And this is the less remembered criteria by medical students, the Glasgow 7-point criteria, which is also based on both the history and bedside examination of the lesion. For the keen beans, this is what a melanoma looks like under dermoscopy, a tool used by dermatologists to have a closer look at dermatological lesions. Here you can see multiple brown globules, an irregular shape to the lesion, a blue-white veil, as highlighted by the blue arrows, something called radial streaming, as pointed out by the thin arrows, and broad networking, pointing out by the thick black arrow. For those who are keen about dermoscopy and want to learn more, can go to Dermnet NZ, where they have more images and material for you to learn from. As you can see from this slide, there are lots of different types of malignant melanomas. This podcast will go through in a bit more detail about the four main types, the superficial spreading, lentigo maligna, acrolentigenous, and nodular melanoma. Probably, the most common type of malignant melanomas is the superficial spreading one. It tends to grow in the lateral fashion, staying within the epidermis, rather than growing vertically, crossing the basement membrane into the dermis. As it grows in its irregular and indurative fashion, it may ulcerate and bleed. This lesion tends to present in white-skinned patients and relatively young patients on an average of 50 years old. They tend to grow in the sun-exposed skin, such as trunks and legs. Often on the face of the elderly patient, lentigo maligna presents as a flat, large macule or plaque, 
that grows quite slowly. One third of them will evolve to a more invasive type, lentigo malignant melanoma, which itself takes up 10 to 15% of all malignant melanomas. While lentigo maligna is a malignant melanoma in situ, lentigo malignant melanoma is diagnosed histopathologically with malignant melanocytes invading in the dermis. Acrolytigenous, a relatively rare melanoma, comprising only 5% of all melanomas, often presents in darker skinned individuals in the palms, soles, or subungal skin, as noted on both images. Often a dark brown or blue black macule with ill defined borders, they are associated with a poor prognosis. The nodular type of melanomas are very aggressive, as they can grow very rapidly within weeks to months, often arising de novo in patients over 50 years old, males more than females. They have a tendency to grow vertically through the epidermis and basement membrane rather than laterally. These nodular melanomas can vary in color, but can be ulcerated with a sharply delineated border. If on examination, the diagnosis of melanoma is suspected, to investigate the lesion, an excisional biopsy with a 2 to 3 millimeter margin is preferably taken for histological diagnosis and to determine the Clark's level and Breslow thickness, both of which will be explained in the next few slides. Lymphocentigraphy can be used to trace lymph drainage and determine the sentinel nodes. If the primary melanoma has a depth of less than one millimeter, sentinel lymph node biopsy may be done to histologically examine for metastatic involvement. Staging can also be done via further imaging, such as CT tap. To manage and treat patients with melanomas, firstly, we need to prevent further damage by educating patients about their diagnosis and limiting further sun overexposure and avoiding sunburns. The lesion will need to undergo a wide local excision with an excision margin based on the breast low thickness measured. If metastases are present, chemotherapy and biological therapy are considered. There are several prognostic markers used to look at the prognosis of patients with melanomas. The thicker the breast low thickness and the deeper the Clark level, the more likely metastases are present or going to develop. Other poor prognostic markers are the presence of alteration, increased mitotic rates, pigmented lesions in the trunks, and males generally have a poorer prognosis than females. In summary, we have gone through the definition, epidemiology, risk factors, diagnosis of the different subtypes of melanoma, investigations, and briefly the management and prognostic factors of melanoma. Thank you for listening to this podcast.